I want to take a minute and talk about table saw safety. Um, like a lot of people, my table saw I bought used and it didn't come with any of the safety equipment. I, I'd really like to have uh, at least a riving knife and maybe some anti-kickback pawls, but it came with nothing as far as safety equipment goes. I made myself a little splitter, so at a minimum you could put a splitter in here uh, in your table saw throat uh, to keep things from coming back into the path of the blade. But what I specifically want to talk about is making the wrong cut on the table saw. Because uh, even just this year, a lot of people I follow on Instagram and on YouTube have made this cut and it backfired on them and they lost fingers from it. So if you're new to table saws, uh, you know, please take a minute and watch this video, watch a whole bunch of videos, read the instructions for your table saw uh, and, and use the tips from people who, uh, who operate their table saw correctly. Uh, and, and don't make this particular cut. And what I'm talking about is running a board that is a rectangle through here so that you've got less surface area on the fence than you do out here. Because what happens is as, you, as you're pushing the board into the saw blade, and I've got a, a kerf in this one already that I made on my sled uh, so I could do it safely because I'm not going to turn the, the saw on and demonstrate this because it's way too dangerous. Uh, so what happens is as you feed the board into the blade and you're pushing over here on this side, the board gets a little bit pinched at an angle and this, there's a little gap that opens up over here on the side. And what that means then is that this corner of the board is getting pushed into the blade and the back side of the blade is what's coming up out of the table saw. And so since it's coming up and you're pushing into it, then the board is going to catch on that edge of the blade and it's going to come flying up at you in a second. But what it's going to do is, is come across the way and, and drag your fingers into the blade. So I'm going to show you three ways that you can make this cut more safely. So, uh, for example, if we need, I think I have this measured out at 14 inches. Let me grab a tape measure. So if we need 14 inches of a board to use for a project and the board is too long, the first thing that we could do is turn it around and cut the short side off. Now that's still a bad idea on this particular board because it's too long, but if we only had maybe two inches on this side, then we could move the fence over here and instead of cutting the 14 off, we cut the two inch piece off. You just have to be able to account for the width of the blade. So if, you're, if your board is 16 inches long and you need to end up with a 14 incher, you're going to end up cutting off uh, a 1 and 7 eighths instead of 2 inches because you have to account for the blade. Uh, so you could just turn it around depending on the shape of the board, but that's still not the best idea. Uh, a better idea is to use uh, a miter gauge. Uh, you can see that I have one here that is, has an auxiliary fence on it, so it's got a little bit more surface area, and I glued a piece of sandpaper down on here uh, so that it will prevent the board from slipping. So what I can do is, is, uh, is put a tick mark on where I want to make that cut and I can line it up with the kerf in the back of the fence. Now if you're making repeatable cuts that you want to be able to use the fence, because you're not going to use the fence during this cut, but if you want to, you can take a little stop block and put it back here, clamp it to the end of your fence, and then just be sure to set your fence three quarters of an inch further back so that you account for that bolt. So now we can slide that board up against our fence and make repeatable cuts. And so we still have space back in here so we're not going to bind that board. And we can be sure when you're doing this to clear the cut all the way through. And I'll go ahead and make this cut. wait for the saw blade to stop. Now you can see that this board didn't quite go all the way through, so I just left it there. If the blade is balanced and the table saw is balanced, it doesn't hurt anything to leave it sitting there. Uh, so, but that's still not the best way to make this cut, I don't think. I'm a big proponent of table saw crosscut slits. Uh, I think that everybody who operates a table saw should have a crosscut slit. They're super simple to make, and they make that cut uh, the safest way that you can do it on a table saw. Uh, the only safer way to do it would probably be to get out a hand saw. 
Uh, and so you, this sled is, is super, super simple. Uh, all this is a piece of half inch plywood with some runners on it. I've uh, got a couple of little finger guards and some 4x4s. Fits right into my miter slot. And I can put this board on here. I do have measurements on this sled. You can put rulers on here and stop blocks. You can make a tick mark on here and you've got a kerf in the back. So if we want this board, uh, we just want to take an inch or two off of this board. We can very safely make that cut uh, without getting our fingers really anywhere near the blade and no chance of, of having any kickback. So if you need to make that cut, don't run it through the table saw this way. Either cut the short piece off, use your miter gauge, or build a sled. Be safe.